Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 252. Follow the money. How often have we talked about that here on the program? According to a new report today, it seems like that's what prosecutors are doing. A report today says that J.P. Morgan was one of the banks that banked millions for Ghislaine Maxwell, just like it did for Jeffrey Epstein. And who was in charge of J.P. Morgan? Who was in charge of all of those deals? Oh, I'm sure there were plenty of people who facilitated it, but let's be real. The number one person who was in charge of all of that was Jess Staley. Him and Jeffrey Epstein had a very close relationship. It was not just business related. Staley visited him on the island. Staley and Epstein were very close even after Epstein's arrest. And then after Staley left J.P. Morgan, he was still able to go get a fancy job at Barclays, even with the stink of Jeffrey Epstein all over him. And now that Ghislaine Maxwell is in jail, awaiting a very long prison sentence, it would only make sense that investigators and the prosecution is digging deep into her finances. And that certainly appears to be the case, according to this new report from Bloomberg. Once they start digging into the money aspect of this case and they start talking about the money laundering and the washing of money and the shell corporations and the payoffs and all of the unreported so-called gifts that we're giving out, you're going to see the case expand in my opinion because they might not be able to tie people into the, the trafficking, right? There are certain people that enabled this or who facilitated this, who they can't directly tie to the trafficking or abusing of these girls, but they most certainly can tie them financially to Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. And that most certainly goes for an institution such as J.P. Morgan. Today's article is from Bloomberg, and the headline is, J.P. Morgan banked millions for Ghislaine Maxwell as it had for Epstein. The author of this article is Neil Weinberg. Prosecutors who are probing accused sex offender Ghislaine Maxwell haven't identified the banks that helped her manage tens of millions of dollars. Well, they haven't identified them publicly for sure. But all you have to do is take a look at where Epstein had his money parked, who was, uh, you know, shelling his money, who was washing his money, and I am sure that Ghislaine Maxwell was not far behind. They worked in tandem when it comes to this stuff, folks. They were very, very close. She was not some wilting flower that Jeffrey Epstein was exerting this guru-like control over or he, he wasn't, you know, this Charles Manson-type guru who he had this great control over Ghislaine Maxwell. Maxwell knew exactly what she was doing and she was acting in concert with him. And if you think that they didn't have their money tied up in the same places... Managed by the same people, I'm looking at you, Jess Staley. Then you are not paying attention to how these two operated. One of them was J.P. Morgan Chase and Company, according to people familiar with the matter. So we know that, right? Everyone who's been following this case basically knows that J.P. Morgan was a huge money institution for Jeffrey Epstein and I'm sure others like him. But now we have the rumblings of it that it's part of the report. And remember, last time we had rumblings going on like this, it was with Prince Andrew and the uh, desire for the federal government to speak with him with the MLA. And then we heard about the MLA and news broke. And usually when there's rumblings like this and they start talking about places like J.P. Morgan, you could always, no, I wouldn't say always, but it's usually a good bet that there's something on the horizon that is happening behind the scenes that we are not aware of yet. That's another tie that Maxwell shares with Jeffrey Epstein, the late convicted sexual predator who was a longtime J.P. Morgan client. Epstein was known inside the biggest U.S. bank for helping steer many of his wealthy acquaintances to its private banking unit in New York, which offered discretion and tailored wealth management to rich clients. While I don't 
really think there's a problem with offering tailored wealth management to rich clients. It's certainly a service that should be offered. I think that there is a big problem with Jeffrey Epstein acting as the middleman and steering business towards you. What did he have to gain from that? Why was he steering business to you and not somebody else? And in return, what did he receive from you for steering this business your way? Obviously, him and Jess Staley were really good friends. That relationship grew. It blossomed while Jeffrey Epstein was not only a client, but according to this report and others, Jeffrey Epstein acted as a middleman and he steered plenty of business towards J.P. Morgan. How much of that business was from dirty, disgusting money? How much of that money was ill-gotten? There needs to be a serious forensic investigation into this case. Because this is, there is a lot, a lot of circumstantial evidence of money laundering here, folks. Obviously, it's only what we can see on the surface, right? And what any inside sources say. But when you start talking about suspicious activity reports, Title 31, how they weren't filed, uh, fines for Deutsche Bank for not following FinCEN database regulation, look, it all starts to add up. Where there's smoke, there is usually fire. And there is no doubt that these financial institutions played a huge part in Jeffrey Epstein being able to do what he did for so long. The question is, is there ever going to be a penalty for these institutions? There certainly wasn't after the financial meltdown when they pilfered all of the wealth of the nation. Now the question is, are there going to be penalties for them acting in coordination with Jeffrey Epstein to enrich themselves and to enrich him. Maxwell had 10 million or more under management at JP Morgan Private Bank according to two people with direct knowledge of the matter, one of whom said she was a client by 2009 or before. Her money there was handled by a team that included several dozen relationship managers, advisors, and others who specialize in closely held businesses. The bank continued to work with her after Epstein moved funds to Deutsche Bank in uh, Deutsche Bank AG in 2013. So not only was JP Morgan facilitating her financial transactions after everybody was aware of what Jeffrey Epstein was, what he did, and what he went to jail for, they were willing to keep that relationship going. For what reason? Why would this bank, J.P. Morgan, have such a cozy relationship with Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell? I think the question is, who at J.P. Morgan facilitated that relationship? Why did they facilitate that relationship? And how did they enrich themselves because of this relationship? And I think that you should probably start all questions pointed towards Jess Staley. J.P. Morgan declined to comment. Oh, well, that's a shock, huh? Didn't they give their stamp of approval over to Deutsche Bank? I mean, excuse me, over to Barclays and Jess Staley? Didn't they send a whole bunch of emails? Did they send these emails? The emails that were between Ghislaine Uh, Epstein, everybody involved in this criminal enterprise? Because I think that's evidence that the prosecutor should seize, and I think that it's relevant to the case, and I also think it's relevant to prosecutions. Because there is many avenues to make sure that all of these enablers paid. And it basically boils down to what we've been talking about since the very beginning on this podcast. How serious does the federal government take this? Does the federal government want to prosecute this in the correct way and show the survivors and the citizens of America and those who are interested around the world that there isn't a two-tier justice system, that it is equal justice under the law as it should be? Or are they going to continue to play their games, give us a show trial, and nobody really gets in trouble for what they did? Now, that's, that's the crossroads that we're at now, right? It was, will they ever arrest Ghislaine Maxwell? They did. Now it becomes, just how far are they willing to go? 
Maxwell's finances are coming into focus after federal authorities in Manhattan accused her this month of conspiring with Epstein to sexually abuse minors, with prosecutors delving into how she funded her activities and lifestyle. Authorities require banks to provide a bulwark against financial crimes by filing reports of potentially suspicious activities. The reports aren't made public, but people do file them. And when they are filed, they get put into the FinCEN database. And there was a, a few weeks back, we discussed all of this pretty much at length and, and dug into it after the Deutsche Bank uh, situation arose. And it's the same here. All of these financial institutions think that they can get away with whatever they want because they've been able to get away with whatever they want for so long. And it's coming to a head now, in my opinion, because they are involved with some really shady characters. We know they're involved with arms investors, I mean arms dealers and drug dealers and you name it, run the gamut. But now we're talking about sex trafficking and little girls involving some of the most prominent people in the world, never mind just the United States. I don't think that they're going to be able to wiggle off of this line, not this time. People are demanding answers. People are demanding someone take responsibility for this. And these institutions have always had a way to do the shuck and jive and and get off the, the line. Make sure they're not the ones in front of the firing squad. But it's about time that their feet are held to the fire. It's about time that they take some responsibility for their relationship with Epstein and Maxwell and for the help that they gave facilitating his crimes. Epstein's financial dealings have haunted one global financial financial institution that didn't raise proper flags. New York's financial regulator this month faulted Deutsche Bank for inadequate supervision of Epstein's transaction several years after he pleaded guilty in Florida to soliciting prostitution from minors. Again, a prostitute, I mean a minor cannot be a prostitute. That whole entire thing is infuriating on its own. So, yeah, of course these institutions are going to come under the microscope. That's a a, a line of thinking a lot of people would have, right? Who is involved with Epstein financially? If you can put the pieces together financially, put the spider web together financially, well, you will most likely come to the nest. And once you get to the nest, that's where you'll find the real venomous creatures, right? The people that are really in control and behind the scenes making shit happen. And there are plenty of those kind of people in this Epstein case. Look at all of these rich people we're talking about. I mean, this is vast. This is sprawling. And all of these folks we talk about here on this podcast, they're all people that are mentioned in court documents or that are mentioned in these other offshoots of cases that have sprung up in regards to Jeffrey Epstein. These are people that have serious questions to answer for. And a guy like Jess Staley, his time is almost up at Barclays. They've already been on the hunt looking for a new CEO. It won't be long before he is out and fired and in hiding like the rest of his buddies like Len Dubin and the other people who have lost their public lives due to their behavior in regards to Jeffrey Epstein. One of the people said Maxwell had accounts at J.P. Morgan until at least 2015. That same year, she became embroiled in civil litigation with a woman who claimed Epstein abused her as a minor and that Maxwell had functioned as his madam, allegations that Maxwell denied. So all the way up to 2015. I wonder what their excuse will be uh, for that. What is, there is no good excuse for that. No excuse good enough for me anyway, for me not to continue to ask questions, to continue to probe. Because there is no good reason why you would accept a client such as this at your bank, for the, especially for the, little, the, the amount of money she has uh, in, in comparison to someone like Epstein, That has to be some sort of personal relationship with her money managers who are finessing the situation, who are telling other people, oh, it's okay, don't file that paperwork, we don't want to lose this client, whatever it may be. If you don't think that happens in places like this and elsewhere, it does, all right? Greed, folks. What did Gordon Gekko say in the movie Wall Street? Greed is good. And that is how these people function when we're talking about bankers and we're talking about people like Elaine Maxwell. 
Following Maxwell's arrest in New Hampshire this month, federal prosecutors said they have identified more than 15 bank accounts associated with her from 2016 to the present, including at banks based in the UK and Switzerland. The accounts held balances of more than $20 million, they said. 16 bank accounts? I don't know about you folks, but I don't have 16 bank accounts. What is the purpose of having 16 bank accounts? You're playing games. You're moving money. You're not claiming here. You're claiming there. You're shielding your money here. And the ban plays on. And if it was just that, if they were just grifting, if they were just stealing, if they were just laundering money, we wouldn't even be right here right now having this talk on this podcast because they would have gotten away with it because we all expect them to steal. We do not expect them to be involved in a brazen child sex trafficking scheme right under our noses with the consent of some very, very powerful people who are running cover. That is unacceptable. That is where the line in the sand is drawn for most people. Most civilized members of society draw the line in the sand when children start to be abused or hurt. And that's the case here. But for J.P. Morgan and the greedy, disgusting sons of bitches in their financial uh, sector, well, that's just money. Greed is good. Prosecutors also said that more than $20 million was transferred from offshore accounts associated with Epstein to several associated with Maxwell between 2007 and 2011, with millions of dollars later transferred back. They didn't identify any banks involved in the transfers. So why would, why would they do that? What was Epstein trying to wash that money with, uh, through her Terra Mar project or through some other charity so he could claim that money and act like it's clean? Look, I don't know. I'm not the forensic investigator on the case. I don't have the access to those files, but it certainly looks like there's some kind of money laundering going on here. You don't flip millions of dollars back and forth like that between bank accounts just for no good reason. And I am sure the investigators, if they're doing their jobs, are all over that angle. Maxwell was ultimately cut off by at least one of her banks in 2019 Uh, Her lawyer, Mark Cohen of Cohen and Gresser LLP, told a federal judge last week. Cohen added that Epstein's arrest last summer caused her bank at the time to drop her, forcing her to transfer hundreds of thousands of dollars to another institution. The lawyer didn't identify the bank. When the bank drops you, you have to transfer your funds out. That's true. That's what happened, Cohen said. For more article... I mean, wow, really? That's, That's the excuse? What about the money switched back between Jeffrey Epstein and her? You see, Cohen isn't doing a very good job. If I'm sitting around and I'm punching holes in this guy's theory, well, I I don't think Allison Moe is going to have too much trouble. I'm your run-of-the-mill average moron, okay? But I see right through your defense. And if I can see right through this defense, I am sure Allison Moe is gearing up and is ready to absolutely hammer these people. And with all of this information coming out about the financial portion of this case, folks, I'm telling you there is smoke here. And where there's smoke, we usually see fire. I would not be shocked to see more charges, be it to Ghislaine or to other people involved that have to do with money laundering and finances and something along those lines within the next short period of time. I don't know when, but before when we heard, when we, we, we saw the rumblings, it wasn't long before Ghislaine was arrested. So hopefully we have some more arrests coming down the pipe. There's some more indictments and hopefully we advance just that much closer to all of these disgusting people having their time in front of the wheels of justice. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. 
The links that pertain to this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I hope you all enjoy your night. If you get a chance, go out and take a look at Neowise. It'll be at its brightest point tonight. And then after tonight, it will slowly start dying away and fading away as it gets farther away from the Earth. So if you haven't checked it out yet, and that's something that you're able to do, grab some binoculars and do yourself a favor and go check that out. We'll be back tomorrow with the morning update. All right, everybody, have a good one.